Yeah, we're live. I see some people have already showed up. Dodgy's here. What's up? Mike's here. What's going on, guys? Today, we are going to talk about uh, camshafts, my favorite subject. Actually, boosted camshafts would be more like my favorite subject. I just posted up a video where we... One of the things I was talking about, because honestly, this, this comes up a lot with people. They want to know, everybody, if they have an LS... And, and really, this applies to more than just LS motors. We ran the test on an LS. I got a fly flying around here. Um, it applies more than just LS motors. Like we ran the test on an LS, but you could do this on a small block Chevy or small block Ford or big block or Dodge or any of these motors. The Atlas, all of these things apply. So the question is, can you run the stock cam or cams in the case of an overhead cam motor? Excuse me. Can you run those with a turbo? The, the answer is obviously yes, you can. And there aren't some that like it more than others. What happens is, and this is a common misconception with these camshafts and turbos, is that people think, oh, that, that camshaft really responds to the boost. No, it doesn't. <clears throat> they all do. So whatever the power curve is that's created by that camshaft, when you add boost to that, if you add a consistent amount of boost, if you add 10 pounds everywhere, which is sometimes hard to do, but if you can, if you can add the same amount of boost everywhere, the curve is going to be exactly the same. So whatever the camshaft did in, in its configuration, naturally aspirated, if you add the same amount of boost everywhere, it's the shape of the curve is going to be exactly the same. It's just going to be elevated by that amount everywhere. So the camshaft that you use will kind of dictate the NA power curve, along with the other things, the intake manifold, the cylinder heads, the displacement, all of that stuff. And then when you add boost to it, it, it just it just makes the motor basically think that it's bigger. It's just making a lot more power and a lot more torque and, and all good things, obviously. So the interesting thing is the, the question that I get a lot is that, hey, if I run, um, some guys just want to run a motor from the wrecking yard, put it in the car and add a turbo to it. And you certainly do that. You can running, adding a turbo to anything, any, like I said, small block, big block, whatever it is. It's going to improve the power output of that combination, whatever it is, by nearly 50% at seven and a half pounds of boost, roughly. 7.25. <laughs> People want to get specific. I'm going to have to smack the heck out of this fly. I need something good. Oh, we'll, we'll work on that. Um, but, but it does that regardless. It does that whether you have, and this is what we saw, and if you guys have taken a, haven't taken a look at the video, you need to. So when we ran at stock, we ran, you know, half a bar of boost basically, and then improved the power output by roughly 50%. We would expect that. When we put the camshaft in it and it makes more power with the cam, because when you go from a stock cam, especially in the case of the LS, we ran an LM7 cam, which the LR4, LM7, they share that in the early six liter, all shared that same camshaft. And it's the mildest of all the factory cam profiles. So it's the weakest camshaft, but it still works. <clears throat> and it produces a given power curve. And then when you add boost to that, it, it elevates that. The interesting thing about this is when we added the other camshaft to it, and I didn't do that NA, we only did it under boost. So when we add the summit camshaft and, and the summit cam was an uh, 8716R, that was a 231, 240, uh, 231, 234 at 50 and 600, 575 lift on a 115 plus five. <clears throat> that camshaft worked good as we would expect. It didn't work good because it is, it's a turbo cam that's a pro LS turbo cam from Summit Racing, but it just worked good because it's a cam. <clears throat> so, and here's one thing that a lot of people don't do. They put a camshaft in there and they're going to tell you, oh, because it has this opening, intake opening and this exhaust closing and all of these different magical things that happen. The reality is, is that what happens is that cam improve the NA power. <laughs> and then when we add boost to that, it, it when it improved the NA power, it had changed the shape of the curve. It cha effectively changes the shape of the power curve relative to the stock cam. And then when we add boost to that, we have a new shape that we're adding to. And, and that's all that happens. And so in the case of this one, you know, when we ran that camshaft, it picked up power, it picked up power, would have picked up power NA had we tested it, but it definitely picked up power under boost and it made more power. So then the question is, okay, yeah, we, we know that everybody, when they have an LS, you should put a cam and springs and boost in it. But you don't have to. Lots of guys can run the stock stuff. 
And if you run the stock stuff, if I if you want to make more power, what's the answer besides going with a cam upgrade? Well, the answer obviously is you just turn up the boost. If seven pounds is good, then obviously 10 pounds is even better. So you can do that with a stock camshaft. And again, the same thing happens, and, and we showed this in the video, that we run the NA motor, and then we run it at seven and a half pounds, and it makes the same curve, just everything's higher. And then when we ran 10 and a half pounds, it makes the same curve, it's just only higher. And it will keep doing that until you get to a point where you can no longer have, uh, if you run out of turbo, you can no longer have a consistent amount of boost. It, it doesn't flow the same amount, so it, it won't support that new level at that same pressure. So it just can't support the airflow. So you'll start having a falling boost curve and, and you'll effectively change the shape of the curve. The other thing that can happen on the other side is if you don't have good response rate, like you have a really big turbo on there and you don't have good response rate, you're not gonna be able to have 10 pounds down at 2,500 RPM, let's say, because you don't have the response rate. So you have a rising curve there. And then as soon as it gets to a point where it can make like, okay, I have enough response rate. And now I've got the cycle going. I've, I've, uh, added airflow to the inlet side. Now I've added exhaust because of the additional airflow going to the inlet side. I've added exhaust and now I can get the turbo working and everybody's happy and now I can make a consistent amount of boost. And that happens regardless of the cam. So any camshaft that you put in it, and we ran this turbo cam, you can run those, you can run NA cams, you can run nitrous cams or blower cams, any of those things work. And that's the interesting point is that we we were at one end of the, we were at the mildest end of the spectrum basically. And with a 5.3 liter LM7 cam, that's the mild end. And then, and on now the other side of it, we kind of went to maybe not the wildest end, but a 231 cam, 231 at 50, is getting up near the limit of the available factory piston to valve clearance. So we went to from the mildest to getting up near one of the wildest cams that you'd want to put in, especially in a 5.3. I, I don't know that I would recommend that cam for a 4.8. It's kind of big. But so the thing is that going from one end of the spectrum to the other in, in terms of camshafts leaves a lot of room in the middle. And one of the things that I want to talk about tonight is the room that we have in the middle is filled by all of the other factory cams. So you can pick up a lot of power from cams that guys essentially throw away. So how many people have upgraded cams, not just on a 5.3 or an LR4, which has the mildest cam, how many takeout LS1 cams are there? or LQ9 cams, or L33 cams, that would be much um, harder to find because they're they're much more rare, but you have that. You have uh, LS9 cams, how many of those are upgraded? LSA cams, LS3 cams, LS2 cams. All of those camshafts, LS6 cams, which is the one that I, for some reason everybody wants, but all of these factory cams, and if you take a look at the video that I have up, I tested all these cams. So if you see what those cams do, and in a lot of cases, those cams will add power at the top, but they'll lose power down low compared to the LM7 cam. That's the nature of the beast. And that's especially the case of the LS7 and the LS9 cams. They're pretty soft down low, and then they come on hard at the top. If that's the curve that you want, and it's going to do that under boost too, it's going to do exactly the same thing. Whatever it does NA, boost just elevates that. So if you lost power down low, you're going to lose power under boost relative to the other cam. Pick the cam for the curve that you want, and then just you have more of it now. So lots of guys can run around on a stock cam. And one of the points that I made in the video is that if you're if you want to make you know 600 horsepower, and if you haven't driven around in a 600 horsepower car especially one that also makes 600 foot pounds or 600 plus foot pounds of torque. Um, it, that's a lot of motor. <laughs> that's a lot of motor in a street car, especially if it's in something light, like a Fox Mustang or something. That's an awful lot of motor. And that's fairly easy to do with a stock cam and, and almost any kind of cheap turbo and intercooler E85. <coughs> Excuse me. All of that stuff is possible. It's very easy. You don't even have to do the cam upgrade. If you do the cam upgrade, more than likely you're going to push power output at a, uh, up to a higher RPM because with a stock cam, I think we made peak power at you know, 5,000 or 5,500. When you put a camshaft in, especially a 231 cam here, you're, you're going to make power at a higher RPM. Not a lot because you're still limiting it by the stock cylinder head. We didn't have that limitation because we had a 205 trick flow head, but you would with a stock head and, and a stock truck intake. 
So if you have both of those limitations, you're still not going to make peak power really high, but let's say that you made it at 6,400 or something. It would be, you, you might shift it by a thousand RPM or something with this, with this camshaft upgrade. You shift it by less if you ha already had an LS1 or two or three or six or seven or nine camshaft in there, because they're already going to make power at a higher engine speed. But all of those things that you do, and, and we're talking kind of LS stuff here, but same thing with a small block Chevy or small block Ford. If you have a small block Ford and you have a factory HO camshaft in it, and you put any kind of camshaft in it, the Extreme Energy 274 is a good example, but any of the alphabet cams, a, an E303, a B303, an X303, F, whatever, if you put that cam in, it will give you a given curve based on the other things that you choose. If, if you're limiting it with the factory E7TE heads, and the factory HO intake manifold, you know, you're not going to get really big gain. But if you have a GT40 intake, a Cobra intake, a, an RPM2 intake, and you have better heads, all those things are going to be good. And if you change the camshaft, it's going to give you a given power curve. Now, if you add boost to that, it's all going to elevate that. It's going to be the same shape. And so the, you know, you don't need a magic turbo cam or any of that stuff. It's going to do what it does. But uh, what a lot, as I said before, what a lot of guys don't realize is what, and what you don't see these guys ever test and a lot of guys that sell the cams is that they tell you, Oh, this turbo cam does this and this, this because of this and this and this, and they've never run it on an NA motor. So they don't, they don't know that <laughs> it did that. It did that power change on the NA motor. And then all we did was add boost to it. They're just looking at it differently. So whether you have a late model Hemi, um, whether you have a, you know, any, any of the LA Dodges or a Magnum, any of the Ford Chevys, uh, uh, the the Atlas is a good motor, is a good example. Twin cam deal, variable cam on the exhaust. Uh, in the 2005 version, it's fairly mild. We're going to test and see how much better if the other cams from the 06 and up stuff is actually worth power. And then we're going to put aftermarket cams from the guys at um, Schneider Racing. We'll put those on too. We'll also test and see if the 06 head is better than the 05 head. And if it is, if it adds power just by bolting it on. But using the variable cam and the twin cam, those are stock cams. Now, obviously, GM never designed those stock cams, that configuration with variable cam timing, to run under boost. I know that they had a boosted motor that they ran in Baja, I think. But that motor was not designed for that. And yet those cams still work very well. And when we see the, if you look at the video that I have up where we ran at turbocharge, when you see the NA curve and then you see the, the boosted curve, it's very, very similar because whatever the cams do NA, they're going to do that under boost. Let's see what you guys got going on. If you haven't taken a look at the video, you obviously need to. I also have the 03 Cobra stuff up. We did the, and we can talk about that just real briefly before we get to uh, a crate motor the guys from Ford Racing provided weight and the first set of modifications we put headers on it we put a throttle body from Acufab we obviously changed the booth the uh, Terry out there at South Florida pulley headquarters provided a dollar boost system and it was nice so that we could just put the hub on and then it made pulley changes real easy we did the similar thing uh, we used the Metco deal for the to help with the upgrading the crank pulley as well because the problem with going down in blower pulley size on any supercharger is that you just start eliminating belt wrap on the on the pulley and you don't have as much you know you you don't the belt doesn't have enough um, surface contact with a pulley and it ends up slipping the way to get around that and still spin the blower faster is put a bigger crank pulley on it which we did so we ran all the pulleys we ran the throttle body the upgrade we ran the headers and and i showed what all those power gains were i really really like that terminator motor it was such a big step up in performance from the other things, the NA464 valves that they were making. It was such a dramatic step up in performance. And uh, as a crate motor, I, I was looking, really looking forward to running testing on that. And we did all kinds of stuff with that motor. Obviously, we ran, you know, a lot of as much boost as we could with the factory blower. I never ported that blower. And, and we probably should have at least later on when that became more, was in more in vogue. But we did, um, I ran all the blowers on it. We ran a Vortec on or a Paxton. We ran a Kenny Bell, Bell twin screw. We ran the Eaton. We ran twin turbos on it. I did cams on it. We ran the, we ran nitrous kits on that various different kinds. We ran Zex, you know, your standard kind of 
wet fog ordeal in, in front of the throttle body. We ran that with the blower um, because obviously, you know, compounding the power adders is a, is a good way to go. Um, I have, but not on that motor. We did run turbos blowing into a blower with the guys at HP Performance. We ran different heads on that. Um, we also ran the NOS nozzles, if anybody's familiar with that stuff. Benjamin, thank you. I have a 5.7 Hemi. Can I get 500 horsepower safely with boost? Yes, uh, that, that would be very easy. The way that we run a 5.7 Hemi, if we run a even an early one like an 06, that motor makes about 385 the way that we run it on the engine dyno. And then adding boost to it, 500 is no big deal. Um, on the O3 Cobra, we ran the nozzles. Is what they were were um, they were injecting the uh, nitrous, and then they they had a little ring, and then they, the injector went into the ring, and then the ring went down into the injector bung. And I'll, I'll maybe I'll do a video on that because those things were pretty cool. It wasn't really designed for what we were doing with it, but we did end up running it. And I also ran the because I like to do it. I also ran that O3 Cobra motor NA to find out what it did obviously to know how much power the blower was actually adding. And that motor, that motor made like 370 NA or so, and then made like 425 when we put cams in it, NA. And we ran it with the factory, the Cobra long runner intake manifold when we ran it NA. And, and then we used that same intake manifold when we ran with the Vortec. And we also ran the Vortec plenum that you that they bolted right to the factory air to water intercooler you know we did all kinds of stuff with, and that's why i like that i was really excited about getting that motor and running a ton of testing on it. so let's see what you guys got going on i love the older 289 motor some made just I've 300 horsepower, if I'm not mistaken. The Shelby version was rated at CO2, uh, 306, and the Hypo 289 was rated at 271. Yeah, you can get a 5.7 Hemi to 500. Take a look at the video that I have up. We did a cam upgrade. We did a cam and springs on a uh, on a beat up one, and there was nothing nice about it. <laughs> and then I added boost to it, and we, we, we made a lot more than that. So it's certainly possible. Um, it would take very little boost to get to that power to get that 500 horsepower level. All cams matter and they're all the wrong cam. They, they are, they are the wrong cam. Uh, the Grand National Ch uh, Chub Rock, the, the Grand National stuff has been done to death, and um, it's actually not a great motor. The head flow is not very good. Um, it has a fairly small turbo on it stock. Obviously, we would replace that. The guys from uh, Duttweiler has done lots of stuff with that. The guys at Kenny Bell have done lots of stuff with that, um, and they're hard to come by. I, I, I obviously have never seen one in a wrecking yard, and um even the cars now are very valuable. So that, 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 that particular motor is hard to come by. That's why I chose the supercharged motor. Cause you can find a lot of those, the 3,800 series too. A cam is a custom piece for your desired outcome. <laughs> the cam manufacturer will tell you what's best for what you want, and you just need to talk it out. Is it true that supercharger cams preferably don't have overlap? Um, no, that's not true. A, a centrifugal supercharger cam will actually want overlap, and you'll make more low-speed power if you have it. So the overlap thing is, uh, is you know, it's kind of an old wives' tale. All cams are turbo cams. They are. Blower cams usually have a 112 L LCA. Look at the, um, like a positive displacement blower cam is going to have a, going to usually have different specs than um, a centrifugal blower cam will. A centrifugal blower cam is going to be much more like an NA cam. And, and, and honestly, I would run that same kind of cam with a positive displacement blower. What they normally do is have a really wide LSA. They try to push power out 
higher in the RPM range with a positive displacement blower because it has so much inherent low speed, immediate boost response kind of torque production, but it makes those cams really soft. So if you look at the, to get an idea what I'm talking about, look at the video that I have up on where we ran all the stock cams NA on the 5.3. And you can see how soft that the um, LS9 camshaft is compared to a truck cam. And that's what's happening with boost. And they did that, they did that by design so if you can get that torque back in the middle, you can just make more. And I know that they're trying to maybe uh, minimize detonation and that kind of thing. And, and they're trying to, like I said, push the power out higher in the RPM range. They're also trying to, in doing that, they're also trying to get good idle quality. And they're looking at emissions and all sorts of different things. But for me, for the power output, I, I the, the, the NA cams work very, very well. Did I miss the Dodge Magnum 5.9? No, you did not. Vern, so you took your 289 out to 306. That's good. That will help. You're saying you use any cam with boost, but at some point, when does back pressure become a problem and you start burning exhaust? So when are you getting, um, my question is, when are you getting, when and why are you getting back pressure? I, I, is That's usually the problem is people don't understand what's happening with the back pressure thing. The reason that back pressure goes up um, is not because of cam timing normally, it's because of power. So when we saw that, I didn't put that in the video. Here, I need to fix this. See what's going on here. There we go. Come on. I just need you to focus. That's all. That's all. Come on. Just need you to cooperate a little bit. Man, my camera's kind of jacked up here. It's not cooperating. Um, if, as you increase power, okay, you are definitely you are definitely going to be replaced. I'm not. I'm not really liking your attitude very much. <laughs> I'm trying all kinds of tricks here. Um, what happens with back pressure is if you increase the power output dramatically, like for instance, when we went from the stock cam to the aftermarket cam running the same boost level, we made a lot more power. The back pressure went up. The back pressure didn't go up because the cam didn't right have the right valve events in it. The back pressure went up because now we're making more power at the same boost pressure. So relative to the boost pressure now, we have a lot more exhaust flow because we're making a lot more power. So now we have more exhaust flow, so we have more back pressure. That's not a valve event related thing. That's what a lot of guys don't understand. And even a lot of really good cam guys don't understand that. They're like, oh yeah, you had too much of this or not enough of this or you needed to do this. I said, no, this is supposed to happen. This is exactly what will happen. It's just like putting this thing on a bigger motor. If the bigger motor is making more power at the same boost level, it has to have more exhaust flow. When you have more exhaust flow, the back pressure will go up. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't, that there isn't cam timing at very high levels of power and racing and, and dedicated builds where that becomes important. Nobody that's building a thousand horsepower motor needs a custom cam. Nobody that's building a thousand horsepower motor even needs a turbo cam. All of that is very easy with almost any camshaft. I could take a camshaft from 210 degrees to 230 degrees at 50 and make a thousand horsepower with any of those cams in the middle there. It's not, it's not like a, a, the problem is that a lot of the cam guys will want you to think that that's magic. And anybody that talks to you about camshafts in terms of, Valve Events is is a guy that owns a camshaft company and he's trying to sell you something. And when he does that, he's trying to tell you how much he knows about camshafts. But the thing is, like I said, for a thousand horsepower, it's so easy. You can put any stage one, you could put a stock LS9 camshaft in there and easily make a thousand horsepower if you just add boost to that combination. 
it's not hard. It's not magic. It's not, there's no wonder there. It's, it's very, very easy. Let's see. What's my max horsepower for my stock cam 48 with the GT45? A GT45 is about a 700 or 750 horsepower turbo. Uh, the 7875 is going to be another two or 300 above that. So the, the turbo is going to dictate the power output there. How much horsepower do you think you can get out of a stroke 289 with no with no boost? Okay, uh, all motor. Well, you can get a lot of horsepower. It depends on what your budget is and what else you're doing to it. Like if you took a 289 cubic motor and, and made four valve heads for it and did all the things that you could do to something and, and maximize it and run it at 20,000 RPM, you could get a lot. So between a stock one and between that being the other extreme, it's the amount of power that you get is just going to be dictated by how much money you're going to put into it and how elaborate you want to get into the motor. I'm trying to run no more than 26 pounds of boost. So that way I won't destroy the block. <laughs> it's pretty powerful turbo setup. Motor's good for 40 pounds. We're afraid to go beyond. So I won't ruin the block. Um, Bernie, what are you running 26 pounds on? Did I, did I miss that? How much boost and or power can the 289 handle? I don't know. I've never run it on the 289, but that's got to be that's got to be every bit as as strong as a five liter, right? How can I add more horsepower without a ton of cost? Uh, Benjamin, I'm trying to find out what else you were talking about here. Oh, low end horsepower. Uh, for low end, you want to concentrate on displacement, compression, long tube headers, and long runner intake manifolds. Camshaft is not going to get you, almost no camshaft is going to get you power at 2000 RPM. If a cam stated RPM range is 1500 to 5000, I don't know of any cam that's going to change power at 1500 RPM. Does a turbo change that or just augment the given ranges power. Mike, if you add the same amount of boost everywhere, it's just, it's just going to make exactly the same curve, but it's going to be higher everywhere. If you have a rising boost curve at the end, you can extend where the thing makes peak power, but otherwise it doesn't really change it. Let's see what we got going on here. Can I run a Magnuson supercharger on a Saki LK9? Yes. Catch, do you have a paid service where we could get specific performance parts to purchase for the LQ9? Uh, I don't I don't sell those things. Sometimes I've used stuff that I get rid of, but uh, otherwise, no, I don't. Nick, I'm happy to help. I have a six liter stock crank, Wisco pistons, H beam, trick flow heads, Brian Tui stage one turbo cam. Looking at an 88 miller. Are you trying to make a lot of power with an 88? It's an awful lot of turbo. Almost racing. Is there a difference between 464 valve and 544 valve heads? And have you ever run the 4V heads on a non PI 46? I have not done the four valve upgrade on the two valve, although it, I'm sure it, I, obviously people are doing it. Um, I think that you would be looking at not a difference between the four, six and the five, four, those heads should be the same, but there are different four valve heads. So there's early B heads or C heads, there's GT 500 heads. So there are different versions of that.
So the only way to combat back pressure is with stronger parts if you're making huge power. The no, you can you can do that with turbo sizing. Um, that that's like for instance when we did Bonneville. We ran a turbo on the Civic, on the two liter Civic, so that we had less back pressure than boost pressure because because we're running sustained um, load for, you know, we're at wide open throttle for basically a minute and a half at Bonneville. Uh, most of the other stuff is part throttle, just trying to get power down so that we can get the vehicle speed up. But we're at wide open throttle, fully loaded in fourth and fifth gear for about a minute 40, I think, a minute 42 so we want to have, we want to minimize back pressure and we weren't, we weren't concerned with response. So you can size the turbo so that it does that on your application. Uh, one of the good ways to do that is to run twins and run fairly good sized twins. But again, you're always going to balance absolute okay, response. making a thousand horsepower. Do you have any fuel pump recommendations? I don't, we don't do a lot of fuel pumps in cars because the one that we use on the dynos is plenty big. It's a big aeromotive brushless pump. I made 830 wheel horsepower on a four cylinder Audi TT 1.8 T stroke to two liter at 42 pounds. That's a lot of power. Does the cam boost have a direct impact on ring gap? When we run boost, we increase the ring gap. The what cam I have doesn't make any difference. Let's see. My Express Van is E85 ready. That's good. I really like E85. Six liter forged pistons and rods looking to make 700 horsepower as a board warrant S475. A good turbo. Yeah, that would work fine for that power level. And, and it would give you plenty in reserve also. Mopar Nobility, what's the most horsepower I can get on 93 octane with a Whipple? Uh, I don't know what those limits are because I don't know what the detonation threshold is going to be. It's going to depend on a lot of things. Um, 93, I don't like running lots of boost and lots of power on 93 octane because, well, and I like it even less running on 91 octane. You have to take a bunch of um, timing away to make that happen. You have to be real cognizant of your charge temperature and stuff. Make sure you get a good cold air system going to the blower to feed the blower, which is always important. But 640 wheel horsepower at six pounds is that's a lot of power for that low of a boost. I think if you're safe with the timing, you can, you can go up from there. At what boost level do you like to increase ring gap? Uh, it's not a number. It's actually more of how long you're at boost and how much ring temperature you're putting in. I, I like to do it. I, I try to do it all the time. I don't always do it like I didn't do it on the O3 Cobra motor. Um, and we've run a few other motors, like we ran one of the 5.3s. And I did. I should have put ring gap in it. We ran it on the, on the dyno with a 300 shot of nitrous. <laughs> and we didn't do the ring gap. We ended up hurting it, which is not surprising. What are the problems associated with this increasing ring gap? Well, people worry about blow-by, but I didn't see an appreciable change in blow-by when we did it. 
what the LSA you need to get more torque at lower RPM with a turbo. You, you need to, it's not just the LSA, it's the cam, but as you tighten the LSA, if you go from 120 to 110 or 106 or 105, the problem is you start running out of uh, available piston to valve clearance and the idle goes, is, gets really bad. Pack 1219 springs for a summit stage two, 8707, or should I run 660 BTR? Car is a Z31 L33. If you're going to have a drift car and, and you're going to be bouncing it off the rev limiter, you probably need to have good springs in it. Noah, I've got a six liter with the intake and headers. What should my next be for higher PM drive? Not particularly huge power. The... The first thing you should do always is a camshaft, especially on that LS2. It'll make a big difference. Will a small turbo V8 make good low speed power and then fall flat up top? You need to size the turbo for whatever the power output you want. So forget about thinking that the turbo is going to do something funky. That's going to be a function of how much power you want. If you want a 1,000 horsepower, you put a 700 horsepower turbo on it, it's going to come on really strong and then it will run out of power <laughs> available. But if you have a good thousand horsepower turbo, then you can have all of that. The, the bigger the power output you choose, the more likely are you are going to have to trade one or the other of those things. Yes. Piston rings have, have a top and a bottom. This fuel type of tech. Uh, affect cam choice. It doesn't for me. Would it be better to do a 108 or 112 LSA for an engine running in 3500? The 108 probably would be better there. What size servo cam will make a pizza getter faster? I bet if you wave a $20 bill out there, it'll get there faster. Have you tested stock OEM coils versus MSDs or other coils? No, because we've had such good luck with, I mean, we've done 1500 horsepower stock coils. We use the LS3 ones and they work really well as long as we can adjust the dwell. So I haven't done a coil test to see. And the, the problem I would have is that I would want to test new ones versus new ones because most of the coils I have are 100, 200, 300,000 miles old. So I don't know how good a shape they're in to begin with. Can you touch on timing with boost? I will say that you need less timing with boost. <laughs> Blow by, where does it go? It goes out the breather and the valve cover. A six liter with an 88 millimeter, you're not going to be able to get a tight enough um, housing to eliminate turbo lag. If you're, unless you're wanting everything that that 88 millimeter turbo will do, then you should pick a smaller turbo if you want to be more responsive. So like if you only want a thousand horsepower, pick a thousand horsepower turbo, not a 12 or 13 or 1500 horsepower turbo. Cause there's no reason to have that unless eventually you plan on going, you know, up and going out to that. My dad put an LS in our Firebird. That's good. What turbos would you run on an 8100 with a 219, 224 cam? How much power do you want? If you if you only want very little, you know, GT35s. If you want more, GT45s. You want even more, S475s. Mike thinks blow by is more to do a cylinder bore wear than ring gap. Uh, those are related obviously, but yeah, if you, if the, the bores are worn out, that's not good. Um, and you will get blow by just from that. The nice thing about LS motors is that guys that have taken apart small block Chevys particularly, and have seen the big ridge that's at the top because the cylinder has worn basically by through running has, uh, worn out the lower part of it. The ridge is still there because, uh, above the first ring land, there's there's nothing touching the bore, so that stays that stays clean. That tells you what it was originally, and and I've seen it be really really thick. 
the later model blocks, a lot of the Ford stuff, the, the, the LS stuff, um, they don't wear like that. It's not uncommon for us to take apart a motor that has 100,000 miles and still see crosshatch on it. Trying to find the right procharger for my LS53. Again, you choose that based on your power, just like we were talking about with the with the turbochargers. So if you want a thousand horsepower one, you can look at a D1SC. If you want more than that, F1A94, you know, you go to 12 or 1300 or whatever you want. Do you think the V10s and V12s are still necessary? I feel as if the V8 does everything it needs to be. What they've done is they've, they're able to package more and more power out of the smaller motors, especially when they add force induction to it. And, and a lot of times you can get for OEMs, you can get better um, fuel mileage with a smaller one and even sometimes with boost than you can with a big motor. And <laughs> what's your favorite car of all times? So I, I have lots and lots of them. Does ring gap change with increased boost? Uh, we put 28 to 30 thousands in almost no matter what we do. So th that will handle, ba it's handled any boost level that we've run up to 30 pounds so far. Uh, and the thing is that more boost won't always add more heat to the ring. Um, it depends on the ring's ability to dissipate that heat and how quickly it happens. So what, what really puts um, temperature in rings is um, sustained running under boost. I think that that's probably even worse than just turning the boost up and running quick runs like we run. Um, also, I, I think that things like E85 help um, reduce some of the ring temperature. Have you done a big bang on a bone stock small block Chevy? Uh, I have not. I want to do one on an L31. The fast LX, LSXR is a two piece design. How much boost will it take? We've run 28 pounds in them, and I, I'm told that they are tested to over 40. How about an HRT cam stage one for, so yeah, the, that HRT cam works good, uh, Bruce. That should work good for boost. Uh, Flex all, it's a, that's, you know, that just, you just have to figure out how much power you want versus the turbo sizing and the motor that you're putting it on. So, you know, what motor are you starting with? How much power do you want? And then, then we hone in on all of the other things. Cause the other thing that's going to happen is camshaft can play a role in that too. Like if you look at the video that I put up, uh, look at the response rate of the turbos, uh, with the, you know, if you have a camshaft that makes more low speed power, it's going to improve that. If you have an intake manifold that has longer runners, it's going to improve response rate. Um, anything that you can do to improve the response rate <laughs> will re will improve the response rate. So there are some things that you can do to help that, to make maybe help you get by with a little bit bigger turbo, or just in case there aren't a whole bunch of different ARs to choose from or a bunch of different hot side configurations to choose from. Because a lot of times when we buy these you know inexpensive turbos, there's only one. Sometimes there's two or three, but different configurations, but sometimes there's only one. So we just get that one and put it on there and go, okay, it works. Now, what we don't want to do when we do that, if it's, if it's got a fairly big hot side, we don't want to put an LS9 camshaft in it because it's going to help. It's going to make it laggy. We don't want to combine that LS9 camshaft with a short runner sniper intake. <laughs> you know, all of those things are going to be bad and they're going to hurt response rate. Uh, how much boost can a Holly low ram take? I, I don't know. I've never even run one. What's the highest horsepower small block Ford five liter single turbo? I uh, don't have any idea. Uh, I haven't run anything at West Tech, so there's no updates on the 3800 or the 4200 yet. I have heard of the speed wheel. I've never used one.
That's a good idle RPM to set the fast 102 millimeter LSXR. I don't know why the intake manifold would uh, have an effect on the idle speed. The idle speed is going to be more a function of the camshaft and whether or not you have a manual or automatic transmission. The fast intake manifold shouldn't affect that at all unless you have the, the, the big opening might make it a little bit touchy. Yeah, Tyler, a, a 408 with a stage two turbo cam and a 76 millimeter turbo should spool pretty fast. It's got a lot of displacement and, and a lot of low speed power production. So Nick, let me know what happens when you run that on that K20 Zero. What system did you run? Did you use to run the 4200? We used a mega squirt, but I'm, I'm going to get actually much more specific on that tell you what it was. And while I look that up, let's see. The guys from DIY Auto Tune supplied an AMP EFI MS3 Pro Evo ECU. <laughs> so if that that's different than apparently what I was saying before. So I wanted to get that right. I already GT45 turbo to 318, sell you one cheap. Did did you break it, Kelly's? What turbo has the loudest whistle you've experienced? I've heard turbos, uh, we had one turbo. I think I've only ever, ever had one turbo actually go bad during testing. And it went bad like almost immediately after startup. And that made a, that made a lot of noise. What turbo should I run for a 600 horsepower, five liter, 5.3 liter? Um, that GT45 is fine. Uh, Nick, yes, I, I have. I, I am familiar with those. I've never used one though. I'm going, Scott, uh, Robert is going for 600 horsepower. What was your most surprising find during testing? I, I think we were pretty amazed by how much power the 4.8 would take when we, well, when we thought it was a 5.3 when we first ran it and we just kept turning the boost up and up and up and up and up. And I, <laughs> after a while, I just didn't want it to break because I wanted to take the motor off because I was so happy with it and excited. Uh, the ring gaps were 55 and 70. That's probably a little on the high side. But that's something you can easily fix unless, did you break the pistons or something in them? With higher horg and torsion power at the top of the RPM, wouldn't that be great for runaway speed on the big end or high speed rolls? Uh, only if you're in the right gear. If you're in the right gear at the RPM where you're making power, then yes, then you can use that. Um, but you can also use it at lower RPM. Tom's in the house, MS3 tuned with Tuner Studio. Yes, I'm in the house, nice. I'm officially building a turbo motor for the first time since I blew up my 944 back in 1999. I do like 944s, man, those things handle well. I was passed by a 944 turbo in my Mustang in the Silver State one time and it really made me mad. It leaked oil like a tanker. I can imagine. Yeah, Mark, the MS3 Pro. Let's see. That's what this was, right? Didn't, isn't that what you told me? AMP EFI MS3 Pro Evo. And Mark's saying it does do, and it does do VVT control because we were able to control the VVT on this setup. I have an L33 short block. I think I should buy some truck 243 heads or aftermarket for her on turbo speed kit. 
it depends on the power level that you want and what turbo you're putting on it. If you pick a thousand horsepower turbo, you, you just need any sort of head on there. You could put a 706 or an 862 or a 243 or a 799 or a 317 or any head that you have laying around on that short block with a cam and you can make the thousand horsepower. You don't need to put a trick set of heads on it. Uh, Richard, in your experience, is adding a low friction piston skirt coating require an adjustment to the cylinder or to accommodate? Normally it does because there's some sort of thickness on the coating and I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably less than a half a thou, but you would want to adjust that. And I don't know that the other thing that you would look at, depending on what coating it is, I don't know if the coating is going to change the expansion rate, um, of the skirt. I'd like to see you dyno a 4.2 liter 12 port Ford V6. Any V10 Ford stuff coming up? I would like to. Uh, <laughs> half inch of ring gap. That's probably too much. C51 Stingray, what pro charger do you prefer? Again, custom, it just depends on the power output that you want. Uh, I really like the F1A94. I also like the D1SC for lower power levels, but if we're trying to make a lot of power, the F1A94 or an F1X, you know, again, it just depends on what you're trying to do and how much power you want. That's the nice thing about the pro charger stuff is they have a bunch of different stuff to choose from. I'm looking for a playlist or some place to find all of your Vortec 4200 videos. Uh, I thought that they were in the other guy's playlist. So if you look at the other guy's playlist, they should be there. Um, if I get enough just 4200 stuff, I'll make a dedicated playlist just for that motor. Oh, Mitsubishi Cordia. Nice. And the Tredia, they were turbos. I had a Mirage. Just bought a 1994 Cobra. What cams are reliable for stock internals? Uh, I like the... <coughs> 94 is going to be 92, 93. 96, 98. 94 is still going to be a 5 liter, right? Then you could put any of the alphabet cams in there or any of the smaller comp cams. Camaro LT1's in the building. The Z's and Supers might be a good chassis for the V10 swap. The problem with the V10's is there's no V10's. Like it's not a V10 like an Audi V10. It's a it's a truck V10. A turbo on a 4.7 Dodge Ram motor. Have you picked up a 4.6 North Star of the junk air yet? No, sir, I have not. Do you run air, air filters on 800 horsepower turbo engine street street? You should on a street car, and we run them on our Bonneville car also. I don't normally run them on the dyno because we don't have dirt and debris in there. What's up with the LT1 series? I need to get another L99. And stock 5.3 with a stage three Texas speed cam. Stage three Texas speed cam is going to be pretty big. And an 89 half ton pickup. And again, 600 horsepower pro charger. Then just get a D1SC. Or you can even pick a smaller one for 600 horsepower. Yeah, they weren't super powerful, the um, those old Mitsubishi ones. The F cams work good in the in the small block Fords. Uh, Aaron, I'll put my email down. I don't know if I have any five liter stuff. Might have some cams. Might have some used cams. Bruce, in your guy's opinion, a twin 
LN Turbo or Arlington Racing Supercharger for a 5.7 Hemi. Uh, fun street. The response rate of a positive displacement supercharger is nice. Um, the turbos will ultimately make more power at a, any given boost level, but they're not going to have what a positive displacement blower does. So only you get to decide whether or not that, which one of those is better. Do air filters affect back, back pressure in any way? Um, they can act as a restriction on the inlet side. Uh, so more than likely what's going to happen is they're going to make less power and so therefore the the boost pressure would probably would or the back pressure would probably be down is the quad four a double overhead cam 16 valve engine yes can you do a big bang on, on a geo metro <laughs> random request i have a chevy sprint turbo motor Uh, I'm talking 5.7 Gen 2. That's what I'm talking about too. That's when I said it, when I say L99, I thought that a Gen 2 LT1 guy would know what that is. The L99 is the 4.3 liter LT1 Gen 2 based motor, the V8, uh, because we're going to swap the internals in those and make a three a DZ302 out of a Gen 2 LT1 because it's a three inch stroke. And Mike, uh, the five liter letter cams are now available through the guys at Summit. I think I think that they just they just made new versions of them. Have you ever tried the Speedmaster roller cam for a small block forward? I we have run one or two of those in the past. Uh, I haven't tried anything new though. I would personally love to boost a three cylinder in a geo. Uh, the sprint is that it's a geo metro motor and it's a, um, you know, small turbo air to air intercooler port injection. Um, it's pretty cool. Still have those Nissan K 24 E headsets. I think that I do. So send me, um, uh, Mac, send me a, a, an email here. I'll write it down. And uh, ARP headsets are like gold right now. They're really hard to get. Uh, Nicholas, didn't the three-cylinder make about 50 horsepower? Man, come on. That's rude. 70 horsepower under boost. <laughs> the um, Metro XFI, I think, made 58 horsepower. That was the high mileage one. Yes, a Don Caprice 4.8 liter or 4.3 liter V8. I can't believe how many people didn't know about that motor when I did, because ever I got a lot of people trying to correct me. You, I think you mean 4.3 liter V6. I'm like, no, I actually mean 4.3 liter V8. There are 4.3 liter V6s, but this is not that. This is a V8. Uh, I have not done testing on AC refrigerant-based intercooler systems. Big block Chevy question, building 496, 320 Pro Max heads, 871 work better or more efficient than 671 for the engine size. It depends on, again, it always depends on how much power you're trying to get. The 871 is going to make more power than a 671. We've made nearly a thousand with a 671, but a good one from the guys at the blower shop. Uh, an 871 would do that and more. Uh, Rocky X13. My mom had a turbo sprint back in the day. Anybody that had a, ha, ever had a turbo sprint is very, very cool. If you want to run a small blower like an M90 and a big turbo with the M90B2 parasitic, it's, no, it's not going to be too parasitic. It's just going to be a big flow restriction. It's not going to allow what that turbo will do to get, actually get through the blower. It's going to help it because when you have positive pressure feeding the blower, all of a sudden the blower says, oh, wow, now I'm not an M90 anymore. I'm an M100 or an M200, whatever the flow rate is, because with positive pressure, the flow rate of the blower goes up dramatically. And you'll see that in, in the boost going into the motor. But ultimately, it's just kind of in the way because you're going to start seeing you're going to start seeing pressure between the blower and the turbos. An 8.1 would be good. I, do, I don't have any of those, though. 
Uh, I think the Caprices were did come with 5.7s. Um, I know that the police cars did because we drove those around. Do you prefer turbo over Pro Charger for the street? I don't prefer really one over the other. They do different things. The Pro Charger has a rising boost curve because it's a centrifugal blower, and, and turbos don't have that. So whatever you like in terms of the power curve, that's what you would pick for the turbo stuff. Some guys don't like turbos because they don't like the heat. They don't like all the plumbing. The Pro Charger, they have kits for applications where you just bolt them on, and it's really nice. So all of that stuff needs to be taken into consideration. Obviously, cost as well, too. Twin cam 1.3 Suzuki Swift. I know that we all the all the turbo sprint guys longed for that motor. That was like the big block version of what we had of our one liter that we had. Have you done an LS series on destroking? What's your take on it? Yeah, take a look at the video that I have up where we where we did an 8,000 RPM motor by taking it, combining an LS3 block, and we put the four rate crank in it with custom rods and pistons, and then ran it up to 8,000 with you know, lots of cylinder head and a tunnel ram and camshaft and stuff. Um, and what happens with destroking a motor, like destroking any motor, is that you make less power. So there's no reason to destroke it unless you're having to fit it in a class or that you think it's cool. That's why we're doing the the 302 LT1, a, a, you know, a semi-modern DZ302, because it's cool. Not because it, it, it's going to make a lot less power than the 350 version. <laughs> it's going to make more power than the 4.3 liter version because its displacement is right in between those two. So it, it does, it's not better. It's just, and, and it won't rev higher either. The RPM capability is really a function of the valve train and not the stroke limit. Yeah, the 4.3 liter is actually fairly good. I mean, it's, um, I have a bunch of videos up on it. So take a look at the channel and look under the other guy's stuff. And there's lots of 4.3 liter stuff. Every cam is a stock cam. Best cylinder head for a 4, 460 stroke to 557, 12 and a half to one Holly Dominator. You should probably look at the, um, there's lots of good ones. Um, look at the Kazi stuff. He's got really good stuff. Um, who are the other guys out there? Uh, Blue Thunder has some stuff. Um, there's probably some others too that I don't know. <laughs> Back in the day, I rocked with the 305, felt like 350s. With the tune port stuff, they did because you'd mash on the gas and they had all this torque and then they just said, oh, okay, that's all that's there. <laughs> What kind of turbo does a what kind of sound does a bad turbo make? It, you can hear it grinding if the if the wheel is hitting the housing. If the bearing's going bad, sometimes it'll make a high pitch whistle. If it's running in surge, it sounds unhappy too. Can you run eighty seven or eighty nine octane on seven point one dynamic compression? I I'm not a big subscriber to dynamic compression and its effect on whether how much octane it will take. Um, there's so many other things that affect the detonation threshold that are not dynamic compression that a lot of guys put a lot of faith in that, and I don't think that that's an absolute thing. And again, I don't know why you're trying to maximize, you know, why you're trying to maximize power and run very low octane that to me those things don't go together yeah i and i forgot about that afr does make a really good um big block forward head two more minutes guys i can't stay on here all night i got stuff to do yo actually i put up two videos today already <laughs> so this is my third one so it's all for you guys <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it last night. I think I did. If there's anybody out there, I'm looking for a set of Cobra Jet 429 Cobra Jet or Super Cobra Jet, not 428, 429, the 385 series, 429 Cobra Jet or Super Cobra Jet. I just want to, I need to borrow a set that I can run. Even if you have a bad set that needs valve jobs and stuff, I can do all of that. And then I want to run them because I want to build a replica of a um, Super Cobra Jet, a 429 Super Cobra Jet. 
Um, Richard, my setup is a 408 stroker, 98 millimeter air to water intercooler, PRC heads, 180 comp. Should we make the power on just boost or can we go with a small 100 shot? Do you have a 98 millimeter turbo? If you have a 98 millimeter turbo, you should have more than enough power. Oh, uh, S.A. Diddy, you're still looking for the 429. Thank you very much. Front wheel drive by 4x4 four four makes me feel sick. <laughs> I just saw the one PFI has. Looks like it would be crazy fun. Best intake for the LS3. Look at the end of that comment and you'll have your answer. All right, Tom. Thank you. Hopefully we can run the blower stuff pretty soon. Mark, what kind of, doesn't Jerry have 12 port heads? I built my 1.68 valve sidekick into a turbo motor and use a 1.8 super, super turbo. Nice. 150 horsepower, quarter mile, 95 miles an hour. That's a good mile an hour, man. Uh, I don't know about the dyno schedule yet, Mark. I would love to see some kind of comparison between a 49, 429 Cobra Jet and a Boss 429. Yeah, good luck on the Boss 429. I even I even sent a message to Kazi, and he responded, and I asked him if he'd ever run a stock Boss 429, and he never has. $7 a gallon for 91 in Canada. Well, ouch. <laughs> Get some higher PMs in your life. I don't know what I would run. I don't, I don't have anything that I could run that much RPM in. Uh, I do have a, a Flexel. I do have a video coming up for you. I didn't run it, um, or I did. With the guys at Brian Tooley Racing, um, I told them they have a 5.3 that we were doing a bunch of testing on. As a matter of fact, I need to get this video up as well. I just have been waiting to put together all of the video data and the airflow and stuff because we compared um, what we did was you have a 5.3 and we ran 862 heads, and we and we did the 862 243 head shootout, and we did a stock set of 862s, a big valve set, a hand ported set. So we did all kinds of stuff. But the other thing that we did was take all that stuff off and put a set of 220 trick flow heads on and a big cam, and the short runner BTR intake manifold, and then rev it out to 8,000. So that that's coming up if that <laughs> if that means anything. Mississippi's in the house. What's the difference between the Boss and the Cobra Jet? Uh, the short block actually very similar. The, the heads are dramatically different and the induction system is dramatically different. And actually they use different camshafts too. The Super Cobra Jet used a solid lifter camshaft. And the boss actually used a hydraulic um, like the like the regular Cobra Jet. Jerry has a 12 port for the early Chevy six up to 1961. And yeah, and those are aluminum heads, aren't they, Mark? Turbo lot of combination. I would love that. The other one I would want to see, and I saw one, I saw a car in the wrecking yard when I was there, was a Yugo. I think a turbo Yugo would be awesome. Maybe a turbo Yugo with a L, an LS swapped Yugo would be good. You'd be the hit of the, and unless somebody's already done it, you'd be the hit of the LS Fest. Uh, Snipes, I do think that the, I, I think that the um, cam specs probably are important for the top fuel stuff. And I think more so because they're trying to get, uh, what they're trying to do is get as much fuel flow through the motor as they can. And then for them, they can make more than enough power. They can make way more power than they can put down. So then it becomes a science of traction control, basically based on clutch engagement and stuff. Yeah, 
If dynos didn't exist, how did they get horsepower ratings back in the day? Well, all of the factory horsepower ratings were done on dynos. <laughs> 8,000 RPM is a great start. That <laughs> figures. Uh, Chrysler 2.2. I would really like a Chrysler 2.2 in my life, like an Omni GLH Turbo. And what I really like more than, I would like one of those, but I would really like a, a, an Omni GLH with a, a K Honda swap in it. Uh, Aaron, I gave you my email address so you can send me over an email. Yes, goes like hell. A laser back in the day, all of the Talon and Eclipse and all those things. Okay, guys, I got to get going. Thank you guys for showing up. I can stay here all night chatting with everybody. Thank you guys for showing up. I will be back tomorrow. More videos coming out. If you haven't, make sure you go take a look at the video that I just posted on uh, turning the boost up as compared to doing a cam upgrade on your LS. So remember, it works for every kind of motor. Thanks, guys. I will see you tomorrow.